Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Los Angeles City Council Member Mitch O'Farrell. We are in the 13th District here at, at the Echo Park Lake, uh, where we have had a very successful housing operation uh, that began in January. Since that time, including yesterday evening and this morning, we have housed 161 individuals who've been experiencing homelessness at Echo Park Lake. And I've just heard that five additional are in transit to the uh, Project Room Key Hotel. Uh, and uh, so this is a phenomenal uh, situation that's developing. And right now we have uh, the best professional outreach workers, Urban Alchemy, uh, out there uh, fanning uh, the park to make sure that the last few remaining people experiencing homelessness um, will accept the services that we're offering and we can get them into safe shelter as well. And uh, the safe shelter includes three healthy meals a day. It includes medical service if needed. Uh, it includes supportive services uh, and access to all sorts of services that might also include uh, addiction issues. Uh, mental health uh, services and support, uh, casework that could lead people to uh, job security, uh, to a better way of life and a path to wellness. Uh, since the pandemic began, and even before that, knowing the conditions at Echo Park Lake and the realities and the situation there, my team and I set out to make sure that even though the park needed repairs back then, that in order to do this, my non-negotiable was that we would find housing solutions for everyone at the lake, no matter how they got there. And there are all sorts of stories about how people arrived. But the reality is, people who experience uh, homelessness also experience significant trauma in their lives. And Urban Alchemy, which is the uh, outreach group that my office uh, contracted with back in December, has been doing regular outreach. They've been getting to know and understand all of the circumstances and situation that every person experiencing homelessness has been suffering from. They've approached this very compassionately with great knowledge of all the individual people and their personal experiences. And Urban Alchemy is an incredible group that uh, is made up of individuals that have real lived experiences themselves. And I am so proud to introduce Dr. Lena Miller of Urban Alchemy, as, who can talk about uh, her experiences and what uh, they have successfully completed up to this time. And then we know that it's going to be a successful operation until we have every last person indoors. Uh, so Dr. Lena Miller, would you please uh, step forward? Thank you, Councilman, and thank you, uh, everybody. It's been a wonderful experience. Uh, Really what we had one goal, and that was to make sure that everybody in this park who wanted housing was housed. And to get 166, as of today, into shelter, most of it project room key. So that's uh, individual rooms with toilets and microwaves and mini fridges in the room, um, and to be safe. And then also to provide intermediate solutions. I think this is, a, a model for how this work is to be done, to make sure that not one person is left behind. So what our team did was go around and get to know every single person in the park and to figure out what their needs were so that they were matched up correctly with the right type of housing. And for 166 people, when we first came down here, I think there we counted, there was about 100 people as we know, a lot of people are drawn to Echo Park because they understood that there was housing opportunity. So that's how the number kept rising. But as the number kept rising, we were able to keep finding placements. And a lot of, mo all of that has to do with Councilman O'Farrell and his team's commitment to making sure that every single person in this park had a place to go that is safe, both short term and intermediate term and then moving into long term and i think it's really a model for the city of los angeles how do we begin to move these encampments 
in a humane way, in a compassionate way, in a way that really gets people the support and the help that they need. I think one, pe one thing people don't quite understand is it's hard to live on the streets. We know this in the most basic fundamental way, but it's also very dangerous. There is a lot of trauma that goes on for people living outdoors. And what we're trying to do is not only to bring people in better living conditions and sanitary conditions, but also that we start eliminating some of the trauma and the violence and the hurt and the pain that goes on with people who are living on the street. So this is the beginning. I know some people aren't, you know, everybody is not particularly happy about the park closing. There's a lot of people who, are, who have some feelings of opposition, but every single person in this park, every single last one who wanted to go is in a hotel room. It's the right, if we're gonna start moving th this, you know, this, this issue in, in Los Angeles, if we're gonna start getting people into shelter, into housing, this is the right way to do it. So I just wanna commend uh, Councilman O'Farrell, your staff, for doing it the right way. And, and, and for allowing us to make sure that we were, that we got every single last person into hotel rooms and to safety. Thank you. And, and uh, Dr. Miller and Urban Alchemy, we can't thank you enough. And let me just briefly go over the work at the park. Now, I heard on KNX radio this morning myself that there was talk of the park closing indefinitely. Couldn't be further from the truth. There are significant repairs that need to be done, at least $500,000 worth, uh, lots of issues with vandalism uh, and uh, degrading uh, uh, sort of infrastructure at the park. And so that's going to be repaired over the next three or four weeks or five weeks. We'll get a, a read, an accurate read on that from Rec and Parks once they get in there and begin making the repairs. But the park will reopen safely and securely uh, in all of its splendor. It is one of the crown jewels of the park system in the city of Los Angeles. And everyone housed or unhoused will be able to come back and enjoy the park during park hours. It will be safe and secure every day and every night. And that is the reason for the fencing uh, in order to really do a comprehensive assessment and make the repairs. That's why the fencing needed to go up so that the workers, the maintenance workers and the repair workers could do their job uh, without any sort of uh, interruption or interference in a very safe way. And lastly, the housing solutions are continuing. We are stepping up other housing solutions right here in Echo Park that will uh, enable us to house well over 100 additional individuals in the coming weeks and months. And we're not stopping there because this is the issue of the day. And I'm so glad to have partners like Urban Alchemy at our side to help uh, move this forward, these solutions forward. And uh, that's all I have to say. And we're happy to take three questions. So the question is refusal. Dr. Miller, do, would you like to add anything about the refusal issue? Because what we're, we're very optimistic that everyone so far uh, will accept the, the assistance. And, and that's really our mission. Um, because of these professionals, we feel that we'll be able to really compel everyone to accept the help they need. Our aim has been, and so far we have been very successful, at making sure that everyone who has been living here consistently for weeks and or months will uh, be brought indoors in a safe environment. Uh, so the notices were posted as per the requirement from the city attorney's recommendations. Uh, and so the operation was very safe and successful. And I think with that, one last question right here. It's a 24-hour posting, so we're we're in there. I'm going to let them go so they can go in there and keep doing their work because uh, it's very successful. And so I really appreciate everyone's time for covering this important issue. Homelessness is the issue of the day, and this is an example uh, of how we can really bring people safely indoors. Thank you.
There's about 20 people from the from the folks that we've been counting for the last month. There's about 20 who are refusing to leave. And, and now many of them are saying that they want a hotel room. There are other issues that are going on too. There's been people who are fearful to leave. But I think the main thing is if people are living unsheltered and they want to be sheltered, they want to go indoors, they want housing. Now they have housing. And so many of them are saying, or almost everybody is saying, I want housing. Now there are other people there who weren't there before that are part of the protest. But in terms of the original people who have been living in the park, there were 20 that are remaining. The other original 80 plus about another 40 all have said, and many people, the word has gotten out, if you go to Echo Park, you get shelter. Even before the last few days, a lot of people were coming to Echo Park because they heard that this is a way, it's a pathway to shelter. So really what this shows is that people want shelter. They want to go inside. They want to be in adequate housing. And they are. They're in four-star hotels with a bathroom and microwave and, you know. We have taken uh, all sorts of considerations, including personal belongings that we will store safely under lock and key that will be retrievable to anyone who has their uh, belongings safely stored. We're also offering the option of discarding things and assisting with that uh, process as well per individual. And we've been doing that for weeks now. And so we've taken uh, really great consideration on all these issues.